Hey, it's Alan Dibb, and I'm a serially entrepreneur, rebellious marketer, and best-selling author of the One Page Marketing Plan. And today I'm going to be talking about lead generation, and specifically creating your own lead generation blueprint. You know, I started my business career as a dead broke IT guy. I was really good at the technical stuff that I did, but I really struggled to get new clients in the door. And so this was a real game changer for me, learning how to generate new clients, new leads and new prospects into my business. So let's get started. So first, I want to break down your total addressable market for your product or service. Now, this is a rule of thumb and on average for most industries. So on average, about 3% of your addressable target market are hot prospects who are ready to buy today. And everybody is fighting for those 3% hot prospects. Everyone's running ads for them. Everyone's trying to get them in the door and convert them. Now, here's the thing, and this is the exciting part. There's a further 7% that are really warm prospects. So these are people who are ready and open to buying, but maybe they need a little bit of help uh, in the process. Maybe they need some questions answered, or maybe they need to know a little bit more about your product or service or how you work. And then there are a further 30% cool prospects. So they're prospects who are interested in what you have to offer, but they're not ready to buy right now. And here's the thing, everybody knows how to deal with the hot prospects. You know, so a hot prospect is ready to buy, great, sign on the dotted line or click the buy now button or whatever. But it's the more sophisticated businesses and more sophisticated marketers that really know how to properly deal with the 7% warm prospects and the 30% cool prospects. And it's a very, very important part of building your sales and marketing pipeline. A lot of people tra- treat all of their prospects the same way. So they treat the 3% hot prospects the same as they treat the warm prospects and the cool prospects. And that's a big mistake in my opinion because you're really reducing your total addressable market to only those 3% of hot prospects. If you don't have a process to deal with your warm prospects and your cool prospects, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. So today we're gonna, I'm going to share with you the lead generation blueprint that's really going to help you uh, use this process to massively increase your addressable target market. So as we mentioned, there's a massive missed opportunity if you're only focusing on the 3% because that's where the most competition is. It's only a tiny proportion of your real addressable target market and they're the most expensive to advertise to. Now, if you go from a 3% addressable target market to a 40% addressable target market by incorporating those th- those 7% uh, warm prospects and those 30% cool prospects, you're increasing your advertising effectiveness by over 1200%, which is incredibly exciting. And so mo- for most businesses, that would be an absolute game changer. So here's the value-based lead nurturing framework that I want you to use so that we can increase our addressable target market and build that pipeline of future leads and future prospects. So there's four major stages. First, we want to attract We want to attract hot, warm, and cool prospects with a value-based offer that focuses very much on the problem that they're experiencing. Now, notice we're talking about the problem that the uh, the prospect is experiencing. So we're not talking about ourselves, our product, how good we are, all of those sorts of things. We're very much focused on the problem of the prospect because that's how they're really going to pay attention to our advertising and our lead generation model. Next, we want to capture those leads. So we want to ask them to opt in to uh, our database or our CRM or our email marketing system so that we can capture those leads so that we can keep in touch with them and build a relationship. And we're going to talk about lead nurturing in just a moment. But uh, a question that often comes up is, when should I capture people into just like an email marketing system versus like a full-blown CRM? And so my answer to that is you need a fully blown CRM when your requirements get a little bit more complex, when you're running automations, when you want to do something that's slightly more complex than just sending a weekly email to your list. Then once we've captured those leads, the next thing that we want to do is we want to nurture those leads. We want to nurture leads with value-based education and information that helps them solve their problem. Remember, we attracted them by talking about their problem. Now, during the nurturing phase, we're talking about how we can help them solve the problem. And one of the things I really love to do in the nurture phase is show people we can help them 
by actually helping them. And so it, it feels like a novel concept for a lot of businesses because so many people are just going for the jugular. They're trying to get the sale over the line as quickly as possible. And there's nothing wrong with selling to hot prospects, but if you're only selling to hot prospects, you're missing a very large percentage of your addressable market. So what we want to do in the nurturing phase is to really build trust with them, give them a lot of value, show them that we can actually help them by actually helping them. And we'll show you a few examples of how to do that in just a moment. And then finally, once we've nurtured them, we naturally move into the conversion phase. So we convert these leads to paying clients when they mature and become ready to buy. And notice how we're waiting for them to become ready to buy. We're not pushing, we're not uh, kind of trying to cajole them into buying or anything like that. We're, we're just there when they're ready to buy. And it becomes a really natural part of the sales process. We don't have to be pushy. We don't have to be needy. We don't have to do re- weird sales closes and things like that. It's just a natural process that comes as part of our lead nurturing. So this is the value-based lead nurturing framework. We're going to attract prospects. We're going to capture them in an email database or a CRM system. We're going to nurture them with value-based content. And then finally, we're going to convert them to paying clients. So let's look at a couple of practical examples of this. So first of all, here's John. John is a consultant with a large consulting firm. Uh, He's got a very rewarding career, but he works long hours. And, you know, lately he's noticed his fitness isn't where it used to be. He used to keep active by playing sports with his friends, but unfortunately he's got a really busy schedule and, you know, getting together with with his friends is becoming a much rarer event. Now, this is how John moves through the attract, capture, nurture, convert phase. So Fabian runs Fast Fitness. And so Fabian's Fast Fitness has a solution to John's problem. So first of all, here's how it goes in the attract phase. John is browsing social media while he's waiting for his Uber to arrive. He sees an ad for a free video series on how to get fit with high-intensity interval training in less than 15 minutes per day. That's attractive to John because that's kind of an easy button and it's really speaking to the problem that he's got. So Fabian captures his leads because uh, John clicks on the ad. John likes the idea of staying fit without to having to commit a lot of time. So he clicks on the ad, enters his email address, and requests the free video training series. So his details are captured. Fabian then sends him an automated series of emails and videos over a period of two weeks, showing him how to perform high-intensity interval training exercises at home. John starts seeing results. He starts feeling better, starts uh, uh, doing the exercises at home. He's looking at how he should be training and the form that he needs to be doing. And, you know, he's now feeling really good about this and he's feeling really good about Fabian's fast fitness because now he's getting a result in advance. Prior to this, he was feeling bad because he had no fitness program and now he's got some sort of fitness program going. Then finally, we move into the convert phase. Fabian calls John to ask about his progress with high-intensity interval training, and he explains to John how he can achieve his fitness goals faster by joining his CrossFit gym. And so Fabian's gym is conveniently located to John, and John signs up for a four-week trial. So this is how we've moved in this example from someone not knowing that Fabian's fast fitness even existed to becoming a paying client and buying for the very first time. So this is one example. Let me show you another example. So Jenny runs a successful retail business in three locations. Um, her days are very busy. She manages staff, she deals with suppliers, and you know, ensuring that customers have a great experience is a big part of her day. Now, she used to really keep on top of her books when she only had one location, but as the business has expanded, she's really struggling to keep track of inventory. So Jenny's got a real problem that she needs solved. So Betty's better bookkeeping. Uh, it has a solution. And so, again, we're going to work through the attract, capture, nurture, and convert phase. So Jenny is sorting her email, her mail uh, one day. She opens a letter, and it's inviting her to a local lunch and learn event. And so there's going to be three presentations. Um, but Jenny's most interested in a presentation that really catches her eye. It's called Effective Inventory Management. So she's now got something that's attracted her to her problem. So again, remember, we're always talking about the prospect's problem. We're not talking about us and our solution just yet. Then we move into the capture phase. So Jenny RSPVPs for the event, 
and um, she goes to the Lunch and Learn and she's looking forward to networking with other local business owners as well as the possibility of finding a solution to her inventory problems. So uh, she attends the event and that's when we move into the nurture phase. Betty delivers an amazing presentation about effective inventory management, which is really hitting on Jenny's problem. Afterwards, Jenny and Betty talk about uh, the, the issues that uh, she's having with inventory management and Betty promises to send her a free work report helping her compare three different inventory management software solutions, which is really helpful because if you need to implement an inventory management system, trying to figure out which software to use is a major part of it. And so if there's a report that can really easily help you do that, that's really helping her get a result in advance. So Betty's being really, really helpful in this case. Finally, we move into the convert phase. Jenny is really impressed by Betty's knowledge and her expertise, and she hires Betty to help her migrate her business from her current manual and error-prone system to a fully automated inventory management system. So again, you can see we've moved through the four phases, the attract, the capture, the nurture, and convert phase. And so these are a couple of examples, and really what's more important is how are you going to implement this in your business? Because a lot of small businesses are doing what I call sell and yell. So they're kind of yelling to try to sell more. They're talking about themselves. And, you know, if you've ever been to a party or an event and you get stuck with that person who's just talking about themselves the whole night, how interesting is that? Not very interesting, right? So what we want to do is always talk about the prospect's problem. We want to capture their lead, capture their their details. We want to nurture them with value based content, so help them get a result in advance of them ever doing business with us. And finally, we naturally move into that convert phase. So you'll need a few tools to to do this effectively. You'll either need a CRM system or an email uh, capture system or an email marketing system. Uh, you'll need a website if you're directing website traffic to that site. So there's some of the the um, the tools that you'll need. And really one thing I want to emphasize and that's that I've learned through my own expensive experience and my own work with many, many businesses all over the world is the best marketer wins every time. You know, very often we're told that the best product or best service is what will win in the marketplace. And unfortunately, the marketplace is not a meritocracy. Really, the best marketer wins every time because no one knows how good your products or services are before they buy. Before they buy, they only know how good your marketing is. And so it's essential to become an excellent marketer. So really, uh, my uh, exhortation to you is resolve to become a, the best marketer in your niche, in whatever market that you serve, because it's a very, very important part of generating new leads, new prospects, and new clients. So that's, the, that's today's presentation. And we've got a worksheet that you can download where you can really work through those four phases and figure out how are you going to generate your leads? So what's going to be your personal lead generation blueprint? So I encourage you to download that and really work through those four phases. How are you planning to attract your the attention of your target market? Are you going to use paid ads? Are you going to use social media? Are you going to use direct mail? Um, then how are you going to capture their details? Will you capture their details to a CRM system, an email marketing database? Uh, so we need to figure out how you're going to do that. Then how are you going to nurture those leads? Are you going to send them an email newsletter? Are you going to have a podcast? Are you going to have a video series? What valuable content can you create that's going to nurture those leads and lead them naturally through the buying cycle? And finally, what's going to be your strategy to convert those nurtured leads to paid clients. So will you have in-person sales? Will you sell uh, over the internet, through an, an e-commerce store or via a webinar or whatever may, may be relevant to you? So really uh, knowing and not doing is the same as not knowing. So I really encourage you to implement this in your business. Figure out these four major phases for you. How are you going to attract, capture, nurture and convert leads? Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure presenting this to you. Bye for now.